Niners got some coaches, some coaching spots to fill. Special teams. Freaking tight ends. Maybe offensive coordinator too. And there could be more. Any names out there that are on your uh, radar make you interested? Basaccia should have been one. Can I just say that real quick? The Niners should have signed Basaccia. Then he goes, I don't know how to pronounce his name. Then he goes to the freaking Packers. And now that's a team that's one of the four good teams in the NFC that you have to go through. The only reason you beat the Packers is because they didn't have Basaccia this year. <laughs> and you just, you just but okay, anyway, he's gone. Anyone that you think they should go I thought, I thought they beat the Packers because of God. <laughs> it was they God because they didn't have Packers God having such a bad special teams. You're like, we, we can't allow the, spe- the football guys cannot allow this special team. You, should the 49ers just change the SF to like a, a cross and then like this and like the, the, the star Heaven. and like in like the 49ers? Like, <laughs> yeah, probably non denominational. Um, yeah, I don't, you know, I don't have particular names, but I do want to tell, I do want to talk about what to look for and what where the 49ers might go is. Kyle seems Kyle always seems to hire people that he knows or have relationships with. So that's what you gotta look for. You gotta look for you gotta look for relationships. Anthony Lynn qualifies that he played for Mike Shannon. Yes, he did. He does qualify. They very rarely he very rarely goes outside of that. So like that's why when people what you just mentioned Basaccia or, or how do you pronounce his name and then Pep Hamilton, I kind of roll my eyes because he what's his connection to those guys? He doesn't, doesn't like, have one. Yeah. yeah, though that's not where he usually he typically goes. So I would I would track relationships with him, and and yes. those are the guys you're going to look for, because um, that that's his pattern, that's that's his mo, and then and then guys that he that he brings on internally, like if if he does anything, he's either going to promote someone from within the organization, or he's going to look for someone that he knows. Right. Like, I don't think he prioritizes the special teams coach too much. I mean, his whole goal on special teams, he said, is to not lose the game there, and I think they felt they lost a couple games on special teams, so that's probably why High Towers out. But I don't think they're going to like. I think the tight end coach is probably more important. I mean, they're probably going to look for, to them, someone who can replace Embry. I don't see how they're going to find a better tight end coach than Embry, though. I always thought he was really good. I mean, yeah. ask ask Kittle. I, I don't know. Like, there must have been, I don't know. There must have been some internal strife there with with that, you know. just The fact that been. Kittle got didn't get the ball the last six games was weird. And I would imagine that someone must have. Kittle, Embry, both of them must have at the end of the season, like, yo, what the hell? <laughs> Privately, unless they're just all great buddies and they don't talk like that. But I would imagine, you know, a lot of money at stake. Kittle can't get the ball. Whose fault is that? If you were if you were Kittle's tight end coach and he was consistently getting frozen out so they could throw the ball to Jermichael Hasty, wouldn't you say something? I don't know. Maybe you wouldn't. Maybe you get fired. Mm, yeah, you probably would. You probably do want to have Kit for your guys. I mean, probably I don't do. know. Yeah. I, they, I mean, he was all for- style or, or Kittle. I mean, you're in a tough spot, right? What do you do? I mean, he was also he was also an associate head coach, so there, that just really does come with some other responsibilities. So maybe you're allowed to speak up, right? You're supposed to speak up. Maybe they had a different in philosophy. I don't know. Interesting to know. It seems to be something something happened along along those. I lines. would probably think so. Yeah. Anyway, because I feel like the whole Kittle thing was weird all year. Uh, he didn't seem like he was. He didn't even really hide his. Uh, contempt for the trade he was all in with jimmy garoppolo he really had backhanded praise for trey lance he was phased out i mean he was never the first option this he was it was all about debo all year i wonder how he feels about that and then by the end he was the fourth option in the passing game i wonder how he feel and now his 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 coach of five years who was very close with is gone for for you know so the niners could i don't know i still don't get that but anyway I yeah. wonder how Kittle, the whole relationship with Kittle is. And I think it kind of started with that um, extension. That was, a, I think, a painful process. I think they might have said some things to Kittle in that negotiation process that he took personally. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's possible. I mean, he's only or he's a product of or if wet without Kyle or, you know, I don't know. Maybe he seems like the kind of guy who takes. Has he's, an emotion, he's an emotional guy. Not like Jimmy, who can be like, well, you know, they screwed me over left and right, but oh well. I, mean, I don't think it was like that. I mean, they they screwed him over left and right, except for the the giant ass contract they gave him. So I mean, yeah, I guess they screwed over. <laughs> well. I mean, just kind of like jerked him around. Is that is that is that more fair? Is that like the more accurate? Yeah, way? Uh, it's kind of. But he, I mean, Kendall should but would be wise to get on the trade the trade train because that is. I mean, that's gonna it's be like. Seemed like they were actually had a good rapport on the field together in Houston. They were 
I'm just saying. And also, if you look at it, we've talked about it before. Is in in the red zone, Trey likes to go to his, t- his tight end. So, I mean, and it's not like Jimmy was getting the ball to Kittle all that much the last six weeks of the season. So, maybe yeah, Kittle. I think I, mean, I think the production, I think Kittle's production was tied to, or lack of production or whatever is tied to Jimmy. I don't think it was the one thing though is like the fumble in Dallas that wasn't a fumble. Was it Dallas or was it was it Dallas? I think it was, I think it was Dallas, right? The fumble, and then there was, then there was the drop. count, and then the I mean, drop was like, man, what happened? Yeah, yeah. So it was like, I that that was the only thing that was because there were there were some times that he got missed, but other times it was like, man, you're so much better than this. What is this? It's like the time of the season to step it up. But then he made like the one handed catch in Green Bay, right? Mm-hmm. He made a bunch of one handed catches. No, no, he did. Yeah. He did. He, he did. The, the, the one, still, yeah, the one I think it was Houston. The uh, it was I think it was like a. It was a seam or like a skinny yep. or like a skinny post. Yep. That was really nice. Um, and he had one on the sideline in green. Was it in the NFC Championship game? Was it against the Rams? I forget. Yeah, that's why I think I don't think I don't think it's him and his ability. I think get him the freaking ball. Yeah, and that's why I'm thinking he might be a little salty. Like, yeah. why? Hold on. Why am I getting phased out? What the hell yeah. is going on here? But can someone say something to Kyle? Like when you. Oh, throw, wait, it's also when you throw when you throw the fourth lowest or or like you're the in the league. There's only so many opportunities, right? So, like, there's like so many- the last six weeks, it went freaking Debo 75 yards a game, IU 60, Jennings 30, Kittle 26. That can't happen, man. I mean, it should be like Kittle and IU should be pretty close because I'm not really sure who's better between them. I think the other thing is, but I also think it's easier to take Kittle away out of all those guys because uh, Jimmy doesn't, right? You don't have to worry about Jimmy throwing deep. So, Okay, so, well, so all the more Kittle, reason to bring Trey in. Then let's see Kittle's what Trey does. Right. With Kittle, Kittle yeah, works. Work. Kittle works in the middle, so that's easy. It's a lot easier to take him away than, than the other guys. You, you you know you don't really run the ball with Kittle. You run it with Debo. So like, I well, think that if they get more two deep coverage this year because Trey Lance is taking shots off play action, then Kittle's going to eat up that seat like Vernon Davis used to. That'll be cool. That's should be. We'll actually player. see Kittle catch the ball down the field as opposed to in the flat. Yeah, yeah, right, right, <laughs> right, and that should help his his career and what like. So you don't have to break 95 tackles. And if you do break if you are breaking tackles, you're breaking them on a corner, like then or or a safety, yeah. not freaking linebacker, or or all three linebackers converging on you. Do you think we could get Lattimore from the Saints for Jimmy? Makes sense to get his contract off the books. Uh I haven't looked at the contract, but if it's a situation where you where the Saints would have to eat the the um this the uh prorated bonus and his um his base salary was low. That might be a good deal, but uh, corners usually go for something pretty hefty, and I, he's pretty young, I think. So, Marshawn Lattimore's a hell of a player too. I don't think they're the new co- uh, head coach is Dennis Allen. Yeah, yeah, that's also like I don't know. He's gonna be like, oh, let me let me give away my best cover corner for how is that the best they could chips? Do, how is that the best they could do, man? I'm so sorry, but like Dennis Allen, are you kidding me? Sorry. I mean, I, I don't want to keep I don't want to keep harping on this and but with like there only being four minority coaches, but like Brian Flores is really good was did a really good job. It's just and, so funny how <laughs> like how the how like guys like Doug Peterson, another chance D- Dennis Allen, another like these guys are wait, wait, wait. failed. I failed. Wait, 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 wait. Look, Dennis Allen, you can't compare De- Doug Peterson won a friggin' Super Bowl. So like uh, Dennis yeah, Allen and, and still is got like, ran out of town, which is which is hard to do. Yes. Dennis Allen was a flop the entire – at no point had success. At no point. Yeah. And he was out here. My dad covered Dennis Allen. I mean, like, the word on Dennis Allen is that he couldn't look people in the eye walking down the hall. Like, Shout he'd be the to- kind of guy where he'd be like, well, he'd be like hi, Dennis. Yeah. And he'd be like, like, he's a coordinator, a, an idea guy, not a leader. But that's why he was – that's why he worked with Sean Payton, guys like that. Anyway, good yeah. luck. On that subject, shout out to Levy Smith who got his third shot, which is usually what what white coaches get, right? They usually get, you know, I was kind of surprised on that. Just shows how good Levy Smith is. I hope the Texans actually let, like, don't don't do it like they did the the, the former guy. It's good. Like, it seems like it though, right? Yeah, it's like another one. Hey, yeah. we couldn't get the guy we wanted this year, so why don't we just give another guy one year? Yeah, it's rough. But it's hey, weak. Lovey, take that paycheck and. And do your best. Do your best yeah. job, like shock the world.